Hello friend and welcome back to my channel, Blue Nose Trading. My name is Tori Solis and today I'm going to be sculpting a red tail hawk jar out of white stoneware clay. That's Buteo Jamesensis for my science minded friends out there. Not sure if I said that binomial correct, but I gave it my best go. The base for this sculpture is a jar that I threw on the wheel as a single closed form. After opening and trimming the jar, I store the jars in a damp box until I'm ready to sculpt them. A damp box is a sealed plastic tote with a layer of pottery plaster at the bottom. Damp boxes are a great way to even out moisture levels and keep ceramic work damp for extended amounts of time. If you'd like to learn how to make a damp box, you can check out my video here. I most often see red tail hawks when I'm driving east out of Dallas down Highway 20. They like to sit up on the edge of the highway, which often tends to be the edge of an open field. Red tail hawks often take a sit and wait approach to hunting. They like to sit on top of light poles or trees that overlook open areas, while watching and waiting for an opportunity to snatch up a snack from the field. These hawks favor small mammals such as squirrels, rabbits, or rats, but will also eat other birds, snakes, and other assorted small animals if the opportunity arises. I'd like to hope that we could keep some open fields around my area. Where I live is a prairie eco-region after all, and native species like the red-tailed hawk rely on those open fields to find their prey. Sadly, in the 10 years I've lived here, the concrete continues to relentlessly consume the prairie. I think that the prairies and grasslands often get the short stick for ecosystem hype. In today's socioeconomic philosophy, open fields often look like dollar signs to hungry land developers itching to put a planned housing complete with an ultra-annoying HOA, or corporate investors eager to put yet another of the same 16 chain stores that you see every two stinking miles. I guess I'd just rather see a wooded area or grassy plains dotted with wildflowers swaying in the wind than one more god dang Big Lots or Sonic. Clearly, I have some strong ecological opinions on urbanization, but I digress. Most thankfully, the red-tailed hawk is a common friend here in Texas. Their conservation status is listed as low concern. You can find red-tailed hawks in every continental state in the United States. Here in Texas, we have an extra abundance of red-tailed hawks in the winter as birds that fly south travel here for their migration. We would have to seriously mess some stuff up for these birds to be under any immediate threat, but at this point, not much surprises me down here, y'all. So it's good to just send out a message into the world calling for ecological consideration as we continue to be creatures cohabiting this planet. An especially interesting detail about red-tailed hawks is the diversity of their plumage. There are so many different patterns and color variations of red-tailed hawks that they can be challenging to accurately identify. They can range all the way from albino to black. Though the most common morph involves a rusty red backside and creamy underside with a band of dark feathers on their belly. However, the exact patterning can vary immensely. To make matters ever more complicated, immature birds also look completely different with longer tails that have different pattern and banding. I honestly don't know how anyone keeps it all straight. My hat's off to those ornithologists out there figuring it out. I usually just make a good guess based on season, situation, and size, so it's possible that a lot of the red-tailed hawks I've seen in my life were something else, potentially. I'm going to be glazing this hawk jar with Mako Stroke and Coat glazes. I like using these glazes for my jars because they work like paints and have great glossy fit on my white stoneware. Not all glazes mix like paints to make new colors. A lot of glazes are chemistry rather than pigment, so mixing them together could cause altogether unexpected results. These of course have chemistry because they melt, but the colors themselves seem to behave as pigment. There's still a bit of nuance in application with what will happen with certain colors and certain temperatures to be considered. These are all just things that you iron out with practical experience over time. Hot and fresh out the kiln, this jar is quite nice. As a critique right off the bat, I don't love how the yellow for the eyes ran down into the black ring. I guess I had my application just a little too thick for the slope of the surface with the yellow. Otherwise, the red-brown color I mixed is just as I was hoping for and the patterning looks excellent. His expression is fierce and direct, all around a great piece. 
As of posting this video to Patreon, this red tail hawk jar is available on my website, bluenosetrading.com. If you're watching this video on the YouTube release, you're in the future and I have no idea what might be going on on my website right now. In any event, you can always find all of my current available ceramic work at bluenosetrading.com. If you'd like to get early access to videos and podcast episodes, consider becoming a supporter of my channel at patreon.com slash bluenosetrading. For as little as $3 a month, you can get first access and help me keep the studio lights on. Thank you so much for being here until the end of the video. Remember that you have great ideas that are worth exploring, drink plenty of water, and I will see y'all next week.